Hi, I'm Shalane from TSC Tuition and today I'll be talking about some major themes in the comparative pairing of Photograph 51 and the Penelope 8. If you're studying the texts of Photograph 51 and the Penelope 8, you will probably be aware by now that this is a new pairing for the VCAR text list. The challenge with any new texts on the text list is that there may not be a lot of consensus about the major themes that you can discuss. Now if you've seen any of my other videos about any of the texts, you can probably guess what I'm about to say. And that is that there is no definitive list of themes for any text. Now that can be good news or that can be bad news depending on who you are. Today I'm just going to talk about some really broad themes for those of you who are really struggling with identifying and talking about the themes of this pair. The first group of themes that I'm going to talk about is gender, power and silence. Now each of these ideas are fairly broad themes in and of themselves, but I think it's hard to talk about them separately, particularly in this pairing of texts. The idea of gender in both texts is always tied to concepts of power. That is, that women don't have a lot of power while men do, simply because of their genders. And this power that they lack or that they possess, depending on what gender they are, is strongly tied to silence. That is, people who have power are able to tell the stories or able to voice their opinions, their emotions or their version of events. In both texts, this is done at multiple levels. One clear way in which we see this operating is obviously that people who have power, that is namely the men, it is their stories that get told. And what both texts do is through the telling of the female stories, it subverts that power imbalance. Of course we see this enacted through the characters of the stories as well. Franklin and Penelope both tell their own stories throughout the texts. And throughout the texts, both Franklin and Penelope come across challenges and obstacles to them telling their version of the story. We also have male characters who get to tell their version of the stories and are automatically accepted as more truthful and authentic and therefore more powerful voices in the text. On another level, in both texts, the women silence themselves in order to get what they want. That is, they play the game to their advantage. While at some level this gets them what they want, they also reinforce that power imbalance in the narratives. So all of these ideas are intertwined in very complex and sophisticated ways. And that's why I've grouped them all together instead of separating them and talking about them individually. The second grouping of ideas is time, memory and truth. Again, these are all very big ideas but I don't think it's quite possible to talk about them individually without referencing each other. For example, we can't talk about the power of memory or the fallibility of memory without talking about time. When talking about time, we have to talk about the effect of time and the passage of time on memories and the accuracy of these memories, that is, the truth or authenticity of these memories. Both texts explore the frailty of memory and how vulnerable they are to manipulation. This vulnerability grows with time as people get older, as time passes, as people forget the opposite of memory. The memories are corrupted. And of course the question of who corrupts it or who has the power to corrupt it is again tied with our previous group of themes of gender and silence and power. So then the question of whose memories are more truthful is a very vexed question. But it is a question that both texts ask. And it is up to us as readers of the text or the audience of the text to answer those questions for ourselves. The third big group of themes that I suggest students look into are storytelling, trauma and history. A lot of these ideas I've touched on already in the previous two big groups of themes I've talked about, 
but I think the phrasing of these themes blend the two groups together and therefore you can talk about them in rather different ways. For example, the theme of storytelling combines the ideas of silence or speech with memory and talking about it together in this way allows us a different perspective on these ideas. For example, just the word itself, storytelling, suggests that there is a listener or an audience. And it is worth asking in both texts, who is the audience to the stories that are being told? What is being assumed of the audience? Who does it give power to? Who is telling the stories and who is doing the listening in both the text and outside of the text? And in storytelling to the audience or to the reader, what kind of history is being made or remade or rewritten? In both texts, we also see trauma being addressed through the storytelling that happens. We see that through the power of storytelling, the trauma is somewhat healed or at least addressed. Of course, not every trauma can be healed and not every story is heard. So a good question to ask as you study these texts is who is not listening or who refuses to listen and what are the consequences of this? My fourth big group of themes is not really themes in and of themselves, but rather the narrative and structural devices that are used throughout the two texts. It is worth noting the narrative devices that are used or the theatrical devices that are used in both texts to convey some of these very big ideas that I've just talked about. The use of poetry, for example, in the Penelope Aid, or the unreliable narrator. In Photograph 51, the multiple narrative voices as well as the theatrical conventions must be studied in order to talk about some of these other themes like storytelling and trauma and silence. In talking about the narrative or structural devices that are used, the main question that we're asking is what has the creator of the text done consciously to manipulate the way that the stories are told to make a point? Here we're not just talking about the characters and what they're doing or saying or not saying, but rather how has the author or the playwright of the text used literary, structural, narrative, theatrical devices to control the storytelling for themselves. So I hope that was helpful. As always, like and subscribe to this channel and other social media to get all of our latest tips and tricks to getting your best score for your VCE English subject. And if you'd like to get some one-to-one -one tutoring in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, please contact us and we can send someone to you. Thanks for watching.